Welcome to the shop, my name is Rachel Gingell. In this video, my dad and I are going to work together to do a valve train replacement on this Continental Z120 engine that's in the Ferguson T020 tractor behind me. If you have any of those old Ferguson tractors that have the Z-Series Continental engines, you will be able to follow along as the techniques are gonna be mostly the same. There'll be a little bit of difference, but you will be able to gather what needs to be done and do this on your very own tractor. We are going to replace the guides, the intake and exhaust, valves, the springs and the keepers. We're also going to adjust the valves in this video. We're doing this as part of our engine rebuild process. So we have a separate video that talks about the pistons and rings and sleeves and rod bearings, main bearings, etc. So if you want to do any of those steps on your tractor, go ahead and look for that video. This video though, we're just gonna concentrate on the valve train replacement here. And that's why we're choosing to do a valve train replacement. But people will work on the valves for many other reasons. If your tractor has low compression, it can be an issue with the components that are within the engine block, but it also can be lost compression because of your valve train. If you look at these valves that we took out, you can see how uh, worn they are. These valves are not sealing, and that would be a, a sign of low compression on this engine. Sometimes when valves need to be adjusted or there's a burnt up valve, the engine might sound like pss, pss, pss. I don't know how else to describe it to you, but if you're getting that type of sound from your um, engine when it's running or trying to run, that could be a valve problem. Sometimes people will think they have an ignition problem and they've gone all through their ignition system, they have great spark and they still can't get their tractor to run. It can be an issue with the valve train. Sometimes valves just need an adjustment, other times they need a complete replacement. So if you are in any of those scenarios with your tractor, I think that this video will be beneficial to you as you'll learn the ins and outs of this valve train and you're gonna have the confidence to do this replacement on your very own Ferguson tractor. We are choosing to start with removing the old guides and we are, chose to do that because we had quite a bit of play in the guide with the valve. So you can test that and it, see. It wiggles back and forth and it needs to be it like this. It real should be tight. Snug. This is a new guide and a new valve. I think that there was a time many years ago yeah. when you didn't have to replace the guides because they were all still okay. But as time goes on, we are finding that more and more engines have guides with Bad, play. They're, really, they're worn out, and yep. so they just need to be replaced. It's really easy. You saw you just drive that guide out. We'll drive it in the same way. This is a removal and installation tool that we Both. made that you can purchase on our website if you need a tool like that. It's affordable, easy to use. super easy to help you get your guides in and out. You can see what a great job this wire brush on the drill motor does. It's got that all cleaned and shined up. There's no carbon left down there and it's ready to be assembled. It's time to install our new guides. So we're just getting it started straight, driving it through this direction. Then we're gonna pick it up because you wanna make sure from the other side that you're driving it in just until it's flush right there. Ooh, you're really close. Like maybe just one more hit might be enough. Hold on. Yeah, I think that feels really good. So we put our guides in the freezer to shrink them down just a little bit. And if you have the time to do that, it makes a really big difference. It helps them um, drop in a little bit easier. So just install your guides in that same manner. We're gonna clean up the seats on this here. These are not pitted real bad or burned. You can see where the valves were just black and not sealing. So Rachel's got the cutter here and we're gonna put the tool in there and we're gonna recut those and get them shiny so our valves are perfectly sealed. This is a valve seat grinding tool. The brand name that we're using, we asked about this a lot, is New Way, but there are a lot of tool manufacturers that make sets like this. The issue is that this is a more expensive tool. So if you think that you're gonna be doing a lot of heads, then it's definitely worth the investment. But if you are only going to do this one valve train job, then maybe you want to have this step done for you at a machine shop. Machine shops will do this. Just you take your head to them and they do this step for you and you can do the rest of the head. So just keep that cost consideration in mind. These tools are sold in different degrees. We're using a 46 degree cutter, but different Z series Continental engines have different 
degree valves. So you need to look at your manual and know for exact certain what size you need to use down. before yes. you cut these down. So what I'm doing is I'm grinding and driving this around only in one direction. Then you can take your tool off and take a look at it. You can see that there's some material there. I still need to keep going, but we're starting to see oh, some of the we're silver. We're seeing a nice silver ring around there, and that's where our seal's going to be. Yeah. The teal 30s, the late 30s, only used a 30-degree angle. So, yeah, like Rachel said, please consult your manual. This is really doing a great job. It's got little carbide cutters on there that go down in there and they really cut it fast. So you don't have to turn this very many times to get a new seat on here. And that's what we're trying to get. Oh, that, that looks, looks a lot great. better, doesn't it? That looks wonderful. Putting a little lube onto the shaft here because I don't want these going up and down dry, especially when we just put new guides, new valves there. It's really nice fit right there. So this is an intake valve that has the pin style for the end. Some of these heads will have intake and exhaust valves that match and are all the pin style. Yeah. But the head that we're working on today has been updated to a rotating exhaust valve. It has a different uh, keeper on the end, which we'll show. So we have two different styles of intake and exhaust valves, but know that the head you're working on might have the same all across. So it's great today. We have to show you how to put the rotators together and the pin style. Yep. So here we go with the pin style. Go ahead and put the spring on there, Rachel, and the keeper. So this tool here is designed just for this job. So you can see I put the jaw right over top of that cap over the spring and that clamps it shut. It reveals the head of the valve, which lets me drive this pin through. I'm I need so a hammer. Close. I need just to tap this part of it just a wee bit. There you go. Let me see if that'll go in. It doesn't want to. Can you squeeze it any more? Just a little bit more? I can if I had to hammer just for a second. There. Oh, there we go. Okay, now watch. The pin drives through, and you want to kind of center the pin through there so it's not too far to one side or the other. And then you release the tool. We got safety glasses on because if it's spring loaded. <laughs> it's spring loaded. And then just tap it a little bit just to make sure that it's set as it should be. And then that is situated for an intake valve. This is intake, this is exhaust. We'll do the exhaust valve next. So here is the exhaust valve. Again, we're just gonna put a little bit of lube on there. Because this one's rotating, we have a slightly different style cap, which you can see here, which those caps you reuse, those don't come in a kit. Good point, Rachel. So uh, with that. They're a little wider too, so sometimes these jaws, whoops. just like that, have a hard time getting over top of that. Okay, I'm on. You're on? Yep. And when I squeeze this, you gotta make sure that the valve is centered into the center. Now this one here is a little, oh boy, it slipped off on the bottom side here, Rachel. I gotta, I gotta try one more time. Let's get you back up here. I'm putting a little bit of grease on these keepers to get them ready to stay, stay put. There we go. Notice that these keepers are a little bit tapered. The smaller end is gonna go in towards um, the head here and the wider end goes outside. And then if you look closely at the keeper, there's a groove on the inside of it and that groove is gonna match up to the groove that you see on the valve. So you put these two keepers around there so they become the perfect circle. Release the tool. I got my hands really greasy. And again, just give it a little tap to make sure that it's secure. Just like that. And the rotating part is done right here at the end. These will actually turn as True. the engine runs. Yeah. We sprayed our gasket with some copper high temperature sealant and we recommend that you do the same. I know there's lots of opinions about it, but it's definitely what we prefer and have done for years and years. So you can press your head gasket down into place and then you're ready to set the head on. Again, I can't stress enough how important it is that your surface is clean before you do this. You've checked your head over for warpage or crack or anything like that. Ready to set that down. Does that look right? Yep. Yeah, I'd say that's all the way down. Yep. Okay, we're gonna tighten these down. These are our head bolts here. Once you have these started and you just use a regular socket wrench, you can follow with a torque wrench. The spec for this specific engine is 70 to 75 foot-pounds of torque and you can look at your manual if you're working on a different engine because your specification will be different. Whenever you tighten down a head gasket, you should work in an X pattern, start your way in the center, work as an X all the way to the outside edge. 
We often like to start at about a half torque spec. So we'll start and tighten them all to 40, and then we'll go back and do the 70 to 75 pound spec to tighten it up completely. While he's finishing up torquing the head bolts, I'm going ahead and putting the push rods in. You want to make sure that they aren't bent and that they're cleaned off, and then you can set them in place like this. While we tighten up the rocker, I'm keeping an eye on the push rods to make sure that they're all lined up, nothing's getting bent or fallen out of place. Notice that these two special bolts on the, go on the end and the more regular style bolts are in the center. Next step is to set the valves. You set the valves when you're on power stroke for the cylinder that you're working on. So watch the valves here. You'll see that this one, this is the exhaust valve is coming up. Now the intake valve is gonna go down, let fuel in. And when it comes up and both the exhaust and the intake are up, that's your power stroke. So you're gonna make this adjustment when you're on power stroke. So we're gonna adjust both the exhaust and the intake valves here while it's at the power stroke. I have a feeler gauge set to 15 thousandths, which is appropriate, it's too tight, too tight. Okay, right there is good. So you can see my dad is turning the screwdriver and that sets this to be either, this is too tight too. So he's got to loosen it up, which is turning the screwdriver. Ooh, that's too loose, I'm sorry. A little bit farther down, down, a little more, a little more. Okay, that's good. And then he tightens it up with a wrench on the bottom while still holding that screwdriver in the same position so that this remains at 15 thousandths. When you put your feeler gauge in here, you want it to be um, tight, but not so tight that you're like having to really force it back and forth. I don't really know how to describe what that should feel like. You're not forcing it, it's not loose. You can't move the gauge up and down. Um, and so you'll make that adjustment. So cylinder number one here is done. Now we're gonna turn to power stroke on cylinder number two, make that same adjustment. Turn to power stroke for cylinder number three, make the adjustment. And turn to power stroke for cylinder number four and make the adjustment. Once we've gone all the way through and all our valves are set at the 15 thousandths, my dad and I are gonna go back and put cylinder number one back to power stroke before we put our cover on so that when we go to time the distributor, we know that cylinder number one is on the power stroke. It'll make our timing a lot easier in the future. So you should do all that same stuff as well. Once you have your tractor back together and you're using it, try to keep track of how many hours you're putting on your tractor. I know it can be a little challenging since these don't have an hour meter, but at about the 50 hour mark, you're gonna want to take a second look at your valves and make an adjustment if necessary. So you would want your valves to still be set to that same adjustment that you just did on your tractor. And because these are solid lifters, meaning they aren't adjustable like more modern engines, they do need to be adjusted manually at times after an engine rebuild or after a valve job has been done. So at the 50 hour mark, pop your tappet cover off, take a look at your valves and make sure that they're within adjustment. If any need to be adjusted, just follow that same procedure with the feeler gauge and the jam nut, it's really easy to do. With that, our valve job is complete. Remember that this video is a companion to our engine rebuild video. So if when you are working on your head and you realize that you need to do work on the rest of your engine, we have a video that will help you with that. And you can watch that video if you need help with any of the other process that's involved with the engine. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.